Last time, we saw Turles' return to Earth, as well as everything following that, leading to the arrival of the androids and Cell. Although, the group doesn't seem to know of Cell yet, which is pretty bad because he's already perfect. What's going to happen from here on out, though? We'll be seeing all that and more in this part 4 of What If Turles Survived. Immediately after sensing Cell's power, the group decides to search for him because obviously it seems to be a big threat. And this is where they come upon a few pieces of bad news. The second they actually locate where it once was, well, they see first of all he's not there, so they don't even know what they're tracking yet. But worst of all, the place that it led them to, it was Jero's lap, the place they were looking for. But it's completely decimated. Turles jokes that this might be good. The androids are gone for sure. And for all they know, whoever destroyed the lab is maybe another trunks from another timeline. Why else would someone destroy the lab, right? Well, yeah, that's a pretty big mystery. Why would they destroy the lab? But that still doesn't explain that power. Kami did warn them about it too. Turles actually doesn't know what this is, and he's just trying to lighten the mood. Although, he is excited to figure out what this power truly is. And they get their answer not too long later. A man floats out of Jero's lab and tells them to watch the news tonight. This is their first encounter with Cell. Obviously, they try and chase him, but to no avail. And later on, the Cell Games is announced. This is going to be his way of getting everyone together now that he's perfect. It should be a pretty fun way to test his power, too. Thankfully, Cell is gracious enough to give them some time to prepare. He just became perfect, and they still don't really know who he is after all, so he's going to give them 10 days. That should be enough time to train and actually prepare for a strategy. Of course, the group thinks this isn't nearly enough time. They leave the remains in the lab and go regroup somewhere. Thankfully, by now, Goku's back in action, and he's filled in on everything. But Goku does have a good suggestion. He mentions the time chamber and says that maybe they should just use that. That means they can get a year's worth of training in a day. And Vegeta agrees to it as long as he gets to go first. Of course, he not only wants to get ahead of Kakarot, but Turles too. So the first two to go in are Vegeta and Trunks. And while they're training in there, Turles tries to think of what he's going to do for a strategy, as well as Goku thinking of what he wants to do too. Obviously, they're going to train in the time chamber, but they still got to figure out what to train for. Goku has decided he's going to train on actually mastering Super Saiyan, and he's going to go in with Gohan. Turles was going to suggest that he goes in with Gohan too, because he'd like to see what that hybrid Saiyan is capable of. Maybe his latent power is greater than they can even imagine. But regardless, Goku was going to go in with Gohan anyways because that's his son, and he wants to train him up. Turles would go in with Piccolo, but he didn't fuse with Kami here. He contemplated it, but it would be too risky because then they wouldn't have the Dragon Balls. Especially since they're facing a villain that they don't know about, like Cell, they kind of do need the Dragon Balls. So for that reason, Piccolo doesn't fuse here, and Turles isn't going to go in the time chamber with him because he feels like Piccolo might hold him back a bit. Turles will go in after the other Saiyans, because this way he'll get to see what they unlocked. Vegeta and Trunks exit. They have ascended Super Saiyan, but only Grade 2 and Grade 3 with Trunks of course not even realizing the downsides of Grade 3. Goku and Gohan go in next, and nothing really changes with that. They both exit the time chamber, both with Grade 4 Super Saiyan, completely mastering the form. Turles actually is about to ask Goku to go back in with, but Goku's going to be using the next few days to actually rest, and make sure they could use this form without any stress at all. But he does let Turles know everything that he figured out about Super Saiyan. Turles still seems to be behind the group because he doesn't have a Super Saiyan. Well, theoretically he's behind the group. He's far stronger than any of the other Saiyans in base but he doesn't have a transformation. All the other Saiyans, even Gohan, they now have Super Saiyan. So yes, while in base he's stronger than everyone else, once they transform, he's completely left in the dust. No matter what, he's leaving the time chamber with a new form. In here he spends a year alone, in complete solitude. Still unsure of why he can't get this form. He should be capable of it. Look how strong he is compared to everyone else. Even Vegeta got that form, and that was before the Room of Spirit in time, and Vegeta's always been behind Turles. Even when he first unlocked Super Saiyan, Turles was able to keep up with him. But now, Turles has no shot of keeping up with them without transforming. But then it hits Turles. Maybe, maybe it's not Super Saiyan that he needs to get. Maybe he needs to completely reinvent himself. Maybe it's something different. He's not looking in the right place. He has to remember, he's different from the other ones. Ever since he ate the fruit of the Tree of Might, his power, no, his body overall, they've just been different. He can't compare himself to the other Saiyans because he's different physically now. Whatever Goku theorized before about the Tree of Might's power being ingrained within Turles now, that's probably right, and that probably changed him fundamentally. He wonders what he could have been like if he ate more fruits of the Tree of Might, but he's done with that conquest. He's not going to gain power artificially anymore by doing that. He's going to use what he currently has, and grow that way. Kakarot can grow from hard work, even Vegeta can. So, Turles is going to do the same. He's been working hard, but he has to work harder. And more importantly, he has to think differently. Turles will come out of this time chamber a different person. A few days later, the Cell Games begin. Everybody shows up. Goku and Gohan are still in Super Saiyan. Vegeta hasn't been seen in a few days, but he shows up too. And there's also Turles who hasn't shown up in a few days. Looking content and confident, Goku can tell that he hasn't mastered Super Saiyan because he's not in the same form. Or maybe he's just trying to hide it, but that doesn't seem like him. Turles would have shown it off by now if he could use it like that. So maybe he does have a power that he's hiding and he just can't use it right now. Cell is glad to see everyone there. It's going to be interesting to fight them, especially because no one's fought Cell yet, vice versa too. Well, of course, Cell does know all their moves and their styles of fighting, so he's at an advantage regardless. 
But this group, they don't know anything about Cell just yet, besides the fact that he has their abilities and has their key for some reason. And the former they just theorize, they still don't really know much about him. Now, Cell does have some of Turles' DNA, gathering it from after he came to Earth. By the time the drones arrived to the fight between Turles and Goku, it was already too late and the fight was basically over, thanks to how quick Goku made it. He gathered some of Turles' DNA, but he still really knows nothing of Turles or his techniques, since the drones got there so late and basically missed the entire explanation of who he is and why he was on Earth in the first place. But it's also worth noting that Cell doesn't have the DNA of Frieza and King Cold. So, having the DNA of Turles, as well as some data from the Tree of Might itself, that kind of compensated for that lack of Frieza and Cold DNA. But other than that, he has no clue of who Turles actually is, outside of the data that Androids 19 and 20 gathered not too long ago. And Goku's the first one to step up against Cell, asking about this too. They still really have no clue who Cell is, and he wants to figure it out before he fights him. They've only theorized that he has their powers for some reason, and that he's some sort of other android. Well, before their fight, he'll at least give them an explanation of who he is. Besides, if they're gonna die here, they should know who killed them and why. He gives a brief explanation of who he is. He was made solely to kill Goku, but honestly, he doesn't really care about that too much. He more so just wants a fun fight. Maybe it's the genes of everyone within him, especially Goku. Maybe that's what's fueling him to be like this. Which makes him all the more curious about everyone's power, including that other guy Turles, the one person he actually doesn't have a lot of data on. Now, Goku and everyone else, he has a lot of data on. Of course, they've changed since he's last seen them, which is going to make this a lot more interesting, but he also does have an unknown here, besides the fact that he doesn't know where Goku's power currently lies. And Goku's pretty confident. He feels like he has an ace up his sleeve, but maybe he has more than he thought. Really, he's just thinking about Gohan defeating Cell, but he's curious of what power Turles has too. And that really pushed him to train in the time chamber. Ever since eating the fruit of the Tree of Might, Goku's known that Turles has been ahead of them. Something changed about him fundamentally, and Goku kept that in mind. Not that he's jealous or anything, or regrets not doing that for himself. No, it's just another motivation for him to push himself. Through his hard work and his mindset alone, he'll prove once more that he can surpass Turles. Turles' unique physiology is just another reason for Goku to keep training, another reason for him to grow stronger than he already was. Not that he needed another reason, it's Goku after all. But it's something that sticks in his mind, and this will be a good test of both their powers. Goku vs. Cell begins, and it goes pretty much the same as normal. Not much really changes here, and I would say Goku is around the same strength as normal even with the later start for getting Super Saiyan and such. So he did start off weaker training for the androids because he didn't have Super Saiyan right off the bat, but he did have an extra training partner so that made his base stronger, and I think by now it would balance out. So later start with Super Saiyan, but stronger to begin with, so it basically cancels out. PEMDAS, or something like that. And for that reason the fight doesn't really go any differently. Except at the end, Goku does give up and he's about to send Gohan in. But he's gonna save Gohan as a final trump card because he knows that Gohan has that power within there. Turles, he doesn't really know about yet. And before he sends the next fighter in, he actually leaves the arena for a bit, going up to Turles and making a deal with him, a deal that no one else could hear. He says he'll let Turles go up next, but under two conditions. One, Turles can't hold anything back. He has to use his full power. And two, don't fight to the death. If Turles is losing, he has to give up and let Gohan go next. This does surprise Turles, but he accepts it. It's not really too unexpected that Gohan might have some power locked away. He still doesn't really know much about Gohan besides the fact that he's Goku's son and a hybrid Saiyan, and he is curious about seeing that power, but Turles still does want to fight first too, and he accepts these conditions. Besides, if he can't beat Cell here, he'll feel like he failed as a warrior. Although, judging by everyone's power, he could tell. He has surpassed Goku. And Cell's glad to see Turles stepping in the ring next. Again, he doesn't have much info about Turles. All he knows is that he has some sort of connection to Goku, and he does ask Turles, curious, are they related or something? The similarities in their looks are very obvious. Of course, Turles does have his own differences, but for the most part, he looks almost related to Goku. And Turles chuckles. He gets that a lot. But their only relation is the fact that they're both low-class warriors. Sure, maybe they're distant cousins or something. But as far as he knows, they share no blood. The only similar thing that's running through both of their veins is their say in pride. And Turles is going to put that pride on full display. The two begin fighting, with Turles fighting in base first. Cell's pretty surprised that he's not going to transform, but Turles says he just needs to warm up first. And they can clearly tell he's grown stronger even just in base. Vegeta and Trunks can't believe it either. If all the Saiyans fought Turles here in base right now, Turles would beat them. His power in base is stronger than four of the other Saiyans combined. Goku, Gohan, Vegeta, and Trunks. But Vegeta's still confident. This is just his base form. Of course, they all have Super Saiyan, and it doesn't seem like Turles has that yet. And Cell questions that too. Does he not have Super Saiyan? With strength like this, surely he should have it, right? And Turles says he's sorry to disappoint, but no, he doesn't. And Turles is right. Cell's disappointed. So this is the extent of his power then. Well, not really. He said he doesn't have Super Saiyan, but that doesn't mean this is his full power. He tells him to watch closely. He begins powering up, surrounded by an aura that looks like a Super Saiyan aura, but it's more fiery, and it's orange rather than golden. He figured this out in the time chamber. He had to reinvent himself. The power of the Tree of Might has always been coursing through his veins. He just needed to figure out a way to harness it and use it for a transformation. He doesn't have Super Saiyan, and that's because he doesn't call this form Super Saiyan. 
It's definitely similar, but it's unique. That's why it took him so long to unlock. He had to unlock it differently. And strangely enough, whenever he uses this, he could feel the maliciousness coursing through his veins, that old maliciousness he once felt. Of course, that's not him anymore. But when using this form, it comes up. And it's what fuels him for battle. But he's able to tame it. He's able to draw power from it. He never unlocked this before because he lost sight of this part of himself. But he came to accept it. And he brought it back up. He tamed it. He made it his own. Turles may not be malicious anymore, but he derives the power from that. And he's honestly not too sure why. Little does he know, he's harnessing the power of Evil Saint and making it a new transformation. It's ingrained deep within him. And due to his unique circumstances, it gives him a new transformation. And it's not Evil Saiyan. No, it's essentially a version of Super Saiyan that's unique to him and him only. His hair is slightly longer. His eyes have turned a reddish color. And he bulks up a bit too. He has a slight red glow around him, but the aura of a Super Saiyan, although a bit more orange. Since this is the power derived from the Tree of Might, he doesn't call this Super Saiyan. He names it after the tree itself. This is his mighty Saiyan form. This is Mighty Turles. He vanishes from sight, attacking Cell with such speed that Cell can't even keep up. Everyone else is stunned. Even Goku's a bit amazed. He knew Turles would be stronger, but not like that. But Goku remembers back to when they made their agreement a few minutes ago. Turles accepted it, but he apologized to Goku, saying that Gohan wouldn't get a chance at all. And this must have been what he meant, but Goku thought he was just bluffing. He didn't think Turles was that strong, but maybe he is. Maybe he is strong enough to defeat Cell. Turles tells Cell that this has two downsides. For one, he can't fully tame it. The power is derived from maliciousness, and that's not who Turles is anymore. He needs to find perfect harmony with himself before he can use this form at its fullest. And on a similar note, the other downside is that it drains quickly. He's like a powerful star. He has a ton of energy, but he burns quickly. And in the time chamber, he actually experienced this once. His power burned out all at once, causing him immense pain and making him immobile for a few days. And with all the power it gave off, he almost destroyed the door of the time chamber, which would have locked him in there. Although this can work in his favor. If he can't defeat Cell as is, once he fully burns out, the power let off by that might be enough to kill Cell. Although Turles really doesn't want to do that because that's going to be painful for him. And Cell's invigorated by this. This is the power he wanted to see. He's being pushed here. Turles initially does defeat Cell, but not completely destroying him. He gives him another chance to keep fighting. It would be a shame to let this power go to waste. And he turns to Goku. Shouldn't they keep this guy alive? You know, his power could be fun to have as a rival. It's just like Goku did with Vegeta and Turles. But Goku yells out that Turles did not joke around here, but Turles smiles and starts laughing to himself. He was just joking. He reminds Kakarot. Unlike him, he's not that soft. He'd never do that, especially not in this form. After all, would he truly be mighty if he spared his opponents like this? And using all of his power, with a single blast, he eradicates Seth. But again, he uses all his power for this. The sheer energy from the blast is insane. It blows everybody back. And after the blast dissipates, there's not a single bit of Cell left. He's completely destroyed. And Turles is there, breathing heavily, holding his hands out, and back in base. He did want to avoid burning out after all, and the only way to really do that was to expel all the excess power that he had. He kind of does wonder what Cell would have been like if they left him alive. But he did tell Goku that he'd win this fight after all, and Turles wasn't going to let Cell go. And this fight shows everybody a few things. One, Turles' training was successful, and he's going to continue going down this path. As for Goku and Gohan, and Vegeta and Trunks for that matter, they can continue furthering Super Saiyan. Trunks of course departs back to his own timeline. Trunks is more than strong enough to defeat the androids on his own now. And he's prepared for Cell too. He thanks everyone for their help, going back home. And even though not everyone got a chance to fight Cell, it was still a good experience, and it taught them a lot of valuable things. Goku and Gohan now have their own path to go down. Vegeta's gonna work on furthering himself too. And of course, Turles will continue to improve his power as well. And with that, we leave off here for now. What'd you guys think about this part? What's gonna happen next time? Leave your thoughts or ideas in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already, especially if you want to see more parts of the series or if you just want to help with the channel because it does really help. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.